Jungling in low elo is hell. Not only do you get constantly flamed and blamed for literally everything, you'll have teammates missing pinging you nonstop and telling you that you're the worst player they've ever played with, which for me I know for a fact is not true. Even as a challenger smurf, I get blamed in the majority of my games, so it's not a ridiculous statement to say that you probably do too. However, it's undeniable that jungle is a really OP role in solo queue, especially in low elo. I can climb to high elo on a smurf with pretty decent win rates. I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm the best or that I never make mistakes, because I do, all the time. Even in gold, I'll just run it down sometimes because I misjudge a play or don't respect my opponents enough. But even with mistakes, you still just win the vast majority of your games as long as you know what to do. To say that I don't change my playstyle at all to fit the elo would be a blatant lie. So today, I'm going to show you how you need to adjust your playstyle in order to climb out of your elo and start looking like a smurf. Now, if you really want to learn how to crush low elo, then you need our brand new companion course to this guide on our website, skillcap.com. We've created over one hour of site exclusive content where challenger coaches go over replays from players just like you to show you exactly what you're missing that's preventing you from climbing. And if that wasn't enough, then we have those very same challenger coaches head into low elo themselves to show you in real time exactly how to execute what they've taught you. Check it out along with a discount link in the description below. All right, let's get back into the video. The first thing you need to do is get out of the mindset of a high elo player. Don't worry about what the technical correct play is or think that someone wouldn't die to something because it's too obvious. The fact of the matter is, is that players in tail high elo are literally asking to die 24-7. It's just that junglers really suck at punishing them. Let's take a look at a couple of examples from my gold smurf games, and you'll see exactly what I mean. As I'm doing a folklore towards bot in this game, I notice my bot lane fighting. Yumi gets first blood, and by the end of the trade, we have a really awkward situation. Sivir at this point potentially loses the 1v1 to even a Yumi, and even if she doesn't, it's not like she has the mana or the resources to crash this wave and get a good reset timer. In high elo, you could safely assume that Sivir will back up and just base right now, because it's her best play. In low elo, however, we should never assume this. In the following 3 seconds, I will be able to tell that this gank is going to work almost 100% of the time. Pay attention and try to figure out how. The surefire way to just get more kills and win games is being able to analyze these small interactions and figure out how likely your ganks are to work. The secret is body language. We already know that Sivir should just back up here and recall under her tower for her lane state. In addition to this, we also know that Sivir should see that I'm packing towards bottom based on the fact that my bot lane didn't leash. Every piece of information that Sivir has points to just not staying in the lane. But let's watch that clip back again and see how we can tell that she either doesn't know this or just doesn't care. Yumi is aggressively posturing by walking up, and Sivir responds initially by walking away. But notice how she keeps trying to turn back towards Yumi, and she does it a few times. If she really wanted to just leave, she would have already done it, most likely by walking in a straight line to her tower. But her body language here is communicating that she wants to stay, even though by all metrics, it's an absolutely terrible play. Sure enough, even though I don't kill her for another 20 seconds, I predicted her actions, and by the time I get there, she's in a perfectly gankable spot. She uses heal and turns on Yumi. This isn't just me seeing the future, I just know that players tend to not change their body language unless prompted by something. In the game, I even said basically the same thing. I have to watch what Sivir does here and see if she tries to push. So the fact that she's staying and not just immediately recalling lets me know that I really want to go for this. I know plenty of people will say that I'm just assuming low elo players will int and ganking them but that is not it. Bad ganks, even in low elo, will throw your games. So let's look at another example to elaborate on this and my previous point. As I'm walking out of base here, I have to make a decision to do raptors or something else. If I don't, I'll potentially just be wasting a ton of time looking for a gank that just won't work. From here, I could do my raptors, gank mid, go for my mark on the enemy gromp, etc. To avoid wasting time, let's read Ari's body language for the next three seconds and see what it tells us. Will this gank work? What do you think? The answer is yes. A few things give this away. If Ari was respecting Annie having pressure to stun or respecting me, 
she would be playing in a different area of the lane. Firstly, she went from being on the right side of the lane to moving towards the left side. If she knew where I was during this, why would she play towards the side that I could gank from? Secondly, watch where she hits minions from and where she positions. Ari doesn't need to be this close to hit minions. She has much more range than where she's currently auto attacking from. Playing this far up means she's looking to be aggressive against Annie. She also doesn't even need to be pushing the wave in the first place, but seeing her Q in auto a few times tells me she wants to. Players usually don't switch up their decision making until they receive a sign to do so. This could be from a few different things. For example, if I walk over a ward here, Ari might change what she was doing and move to the other side, start playing more passively, or both. If I see that happen, I get a pretty good indicator to not waste my time and just do something else. Until high elo, players don't intentionally mask their body language very well, and even then, it's not all the time. Just like in real life, everyone has tells that they give almost unconsciously, and reading them in League is one of the most valuable skills to have. If she was scared of either Annie or a potential gank, she would fix at least one of these things, but failing both checks means a complete lack of respect. She essentially just walks up to melee range to get stunned by her. I didn't even have to do anything. Even though Lee Sin counter ganks, if I don't take a tower shot or dodge the last Q, this is just a double kill for free. Regardless of my mistake, we kill both and Annie gets to crash the wave to deny XP and gold. An obviously huge win for us. Now, you may be thinking, okay, what if she just didn't know where you were because she didn't have a ward, and then dying to this doesn't look so bad, right? If we look at later in the game, I hit a vision plan into River. Based on the fact that all four of my teammates are showing on waves right now, that means that I am the only person that could have hit it. And it shows through Fog of War, so Ari 100% sees it on the minimap. I think you get where I'm going with this, so let's read her body language once again. In just one second, we're going to be able to tell that she wants to die. Why would Ari move forward after hitting a minion? I don't know. Either she really doesn't care that I'm here, or just didn't see it. I'm telling you, even if people shouldn't die to things, they just will. You guys give the people you play against way too much respect. Absolutely no flame to my opponents because I am smurfing, but do you see how stupid this looks? The kills are just so free when you can read what your opponents want to do. And before anyone says, okay, that's just these two players, but my opponents aren't this free, let's look at another one. As I'm going to clear my red buff, I notice the enemy jungler on a ward and his topside jungle. Based on this, I would expect his bot lane to be playing relatively safely. With their jungler on the opposite side of the map, it leaves them extra vulnerable to ganks. However, just like every other example, look at what they're doing. Hitting tower for plating, even though we have a pink ward in the tri brush, and I know that they don't have visions to do this safely. This shows a complete disregard for my presence in the game. Throughout all of my walking time, they did not change the behavior once. It leads to yet another free play off the back of just looking at and interpreting body language. However, there's one part here that I do want to go over. Remember how I said that players tend to not change their body language unless given a reason? That reason isn't always just seeing you on the map. Let's go over another one. Minion waves can be a great reason for someone to change their mind. Here, the wave is about to die, and it makes sense that this would be a natural time for Ziggs and Braum to reevaluate their choice to push to tower, as they don't really have an option to do that without a wave alive. When the next wave comes here, Ziggs and Braum could leave it slow pushing to them, go to roam, recall, or push. They just have a ton of options here to pick from. At this point, I don't know for sure that this gank will work yet, I'm just looking for it, but I will in a few seconds. If I wait for the next wave to arrive, we can see what their choice is. Ziggs didn't even wait for the wave to meet before immediately bombing the minions. This pretty much confirms now that they will keep pushing until this wave is dead. After all, why would he just damage the wave and then back up? It would make absolutely no sense for him to do that if he wanted to do any other option besides pushing, as he'd just create a freeze for our team. Ultimately, that was the final piece of body language that I needed in order to know that this gank would work. Players will lock themselves into decisions that they need to follow through with. When it makes absolutely no sense for someone to change their mind halfway through, it's a free kill or you can immediately recognize the shift in their body language and go do something else if they avoid it. This will not only find you way more ganks, but make it easier to tell when to stop going for bad ones. And if you really want to unlock the secrets to jungling in low elo, then you need our brand new companion course to this guide on our website, skillcap.com. We've created over one hour of site-exclusive content where challenger coaches go over replays from players just like you to show you exactly what you're missing that's preventing you from climbing. 
And if that wasn't enough, we then have those very same challenger coaches head into Low Elo themselves to show you in real time exactly how to execute what they've taught you. Check it out along with a discount link in the description below. One thing that I do want to bring attention to is that low elo players tend to keep their camera locked on themselves and never move it as much as they should. If you're using the minimap to tell when you should gank, you're never going to be able to use body language to its full effect. Actually moving the camera and looking at how players pilot their champions is infinite information that you might just be missing out on. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.